Hey folks, welcome back to another Top 5 List with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today I'm taking a look at my Top 5 Historically Themed Games. Now, I'm being very careful with this one because I, I have a really close liking of, of World War II uh, era games and, and games that simulate the World War II combat that our soldiers fought. Uh, during those years and so I had to be very careful with with trying not to include you know just have a whole list of World War II themed games uh, because that's the period of history that I really enjoy so I I had to kind of think outside the box and I tried to give um, as much thought to a number of different kinds of games, not just war-like or war-ish kind of games. So I hope that flushes out uh, in the five that I've picked. But before we get to that, I do want to mention a couple of other games that I thought would fit this list well, but just missed the top five spots. So my first honorable mention is a game called Nehemiah. And Nehemiah is a game that is uh, centered around the uh, Hebrews' return uh, from Babylonian captivity, and they're rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem uh, so that they can rebuild their city. And uh, it's a worker placement game uh, and a resource management game where you're trying to basically get the most points, but it's all about building the wall in different sections and different you know, the ramparts in one section, a guard tower in another, and that kind of thing. And it's a really neat game that I enjoyed a lot. Um, uh, so that was an honorable mention that I wanted to talk about. And then another one is a game called Empires at Sea. Now, Empires at Sea is a nautically themed game that has a very rich historical flavor. Uh, every turn you, you turn over an event card, a weather card, which tells you how you can uh, move around, but you also turn over a, an, a historical event card. Um, and uh, there is just a very strong, strong sense of history within Empires at Sea, not to mention the fact that you're also at the helm, no pun intended, of these different country, countries from history that were known for or their nautical uh, wanderings, I guess you could say. We're, we're talking about um, the, the, the Dutch, uh, France, England, um, America, or the Americas. Uh, so a, a number of these different countries are represented, and it's, it's just a really cool game. So th those were two honorable mentions that I wanted to uh, talk about. So now let's get to the top five. So my number five is a game that... Um, <laughs> I will only play this game with this game, this version of the game, or with a science fiction uh, themed version of the game uh, called Starfares of Catan. The reason I picked Catan Geographies Germany is because of how the board wa was designed and how the game was designed to fit the construct, I guess you could say, of, of the Catan system or game system, whatever you want to call it the mechanisms and whatnot, uh, because the board is actually constructed based upon what the different regions within the, the uh, borders of Germany uh, cr were known for producing. So if this region of Germany was known for producing wheat, then, then the, the areas within that region are wheat areas and, and so forth and so on. And, and that is just a really cool level of attention to detail that I loved about this game. I'm not so big a fan of this game because it's Catan. I'm a, I'm a fan of this game because, first of all, I spent uh, a good three and a half years living in Germany, fell in love with the country, uh, how beautiful it is, and, and a lot of the different things that are there um, uh, as far as the uh, landscapes and, and the uh, um, um, national monuments that are there. I just I have a connection with Germany, and, and this version of Germany is one of the two uh, of Catan is one of the two that I'll play and this one has a very historical flair to it you're you're not only just trying to connect your villages and that type of stuff but you're also trying to rebuild or rather build uh, some of those uh, very iconic 
um, uh, buildings and statues and monuments uh, that are found in Germany. So had a very strong histor historical theme to it. Not a game that I'm wanting to play all the time, but this is one of the only ways that I will play Catan. So my number five is Catan Geographies Germany. Now my number four is a game that uh, you might say, why didn't you pick this game? Uh, and But my number four game is called Discoveries, The Journals of Lewis and Clark. And the reason I'm picking this and not Lewis, of, Lewis and Clark is because, quite frankly, Lewis and Clark, for me, is very boring. It's very dry, and it's very, oh, man, when is this game going to be over? Uh, when Discoveries came out, and yes, it's a dice version of the game, and you have to kind of allocate your dice correctly based upon what you roll, but you can use other people's dice, and it's just a really neat mechanism, but it also has a very rich uh, historical theme that's there that is only enhanced by Vincent Dutrait's um, uh, artistic ability. And I just really enjoy this game, and it has a historical theme. It probably could be almost any theme, um, but I, I really think the mechanics fit the theme of the game, of traveling through uh, these different landscapes, finding new species of animals and birds and trees and, and all of these kinds of things. I really enjoyed not just the gameplay, but also the historically thematic flavor that the game has for it. So that is my number four, Discoveries, the Journals of Lewis and Clark. Now my number three, I kind of questioned in and of myself, did, did I is this really historic? Is this really historic and historical theme? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. But after a while, I was like, yeah, yeah, this is historically themed because it is uh, simulating the uh, a bunch of different civilizations throughout the course of history that are building up uh, the uh, monuments and the structures that would later become known as the Seven Wonders of the World. And so my number three is Seven Wonders for that specific purpose. Now, some of the artwork on the cards has a very mythological feel to it, maybe. Not all of them, but just some of them. And, and that's one of the reasons why I was questioning its inclusion on this list. But I think it's valid uh, because uh, these are all structures that we know existed. And uh, you are simply trying to uh, take the helm of that uh, civilization and uh, build the best monuments and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and I think it works. You might disagree with me, but I think it's definitely there. Seven Wonders is a great game. I've enjoyed it in a number of different uh, kinds of uh, engagements, brand new gamers, uh, seasoned gamers, my family, and we've all enjoyed them uh, in every single situation. It's a great game. My number three, Seven Wonders. Now, my number two game is uh, kind of maybe breaching that war-ish, war gamey type feel. Uh, it's put out by GMT, and it is called Twilight Struggle. And it is uh, showcasing that period of our history called the Cold War era. Um, the struggle between the USSR and the United States of America and, uh, and all, how all of the different countries in between uh, were, were really at this tug of war. And, and the thematic flavor of this game is just through the roof, historically speaking. Uh, you, this is one of the games where you can actually learn more about our history by playing this game. You learn while you're playing the game, but that doesn't take away from the fun of the game. And I know that sometimes people think that um, fun and learning can't go in hand in hand, but I think it should go hand in hand. And this is one of those times where it absolutely does. So um, number two, I had to include this one. It is uh, probably one of the most historically themed games that I own, uh, and that is Twilight Struggle. Now my number one is an absolute breach of everything that I talked about before I started my list. How I was trying not to include war games and and I was trying not to to include that, but I just could not get around. Uh, first of all, my my uh, sheer enjoyment of the game because of its historical um, impact. Uh, the things that our 
our soldiers and other nations' soldiers have done in fighting for the freedoms that we have today should never be uh, looked down upon. Uh, the sacrifices that they made should never be minimalized. And, and I want to say that on the offset because um, I know a lot of people think that you shouldn't play war games because it trivializes uh, the sacrifices that were made. And, and I have to uh, disagree. I have a little bit of a, um, a different viewpoint. Um, Memoir 44, that's my number one, I'll go ahead and say it now, uh, is one of those games that before we play every scenario, we always read the historical flavor that's behind it. So that we are not only just playing a game that is simulating war, but we're 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 going through the different uh, sufferings and the different difficulties that these soldiers went through from both sides, not just from one. And I I think that's important. Uh, I I've used Memoir Forty Four in classes before to show um, how difficult uh, war can be, and and I know that's a very lighthearted thing. How can a game really? Uh, simulate how difficult it can be. But what I mean by that is that how you could lay out the best plans possible, but something will happen where your plans are thwarted and, and those kinds of things. It, it, and it also teaches different levels of tactics and strategy. And I like all of that. Um, but I think one of the strongest things that Memoir 44 does because of its attention to detail on the historical background area of each of the different scenarios is the reminder that it gives us about uh, all of the different things that these guys went through uh, way back when. And unfortunately, many times, things in our life out of sight, out of mind. And that's one of the things that I think Memoir 44 does. It's a great game. It's a fun game. But at the same time, it reminds us of all of the sacrifices that were made by our men and women uh, who served in our military, um, whether it's the uh, Americans or the uh, Germans or uh, the British or the Japanese or whoever it might be, um, we are reminded. And I like that about Memoir 44. I like the fact that it has such a thematic, uh, uh, I'm sorry, an, an historic thematic feel to it. And it's not just a bunch of mechanisms simulating combat. So that is my top five historically themed games. Uh, if you are of course, disagreeing with me, I know you'll let me know in the comments. So feel free to do that. I'll talk with you later about it in that comment section. But anyway, thanks for joining us. And hey, we'll see you on the flip side. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.